that Allah starts the year with the gate of Tawbah. Only Allah knew that reality and came back to remind humanity from the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad that the gate of Muharram when it opens it's the gate of no haram. You enter into that gate through your right foot as you step into everything holy with your right foot. You step, Ya Rabbi I'm asking to step into this holy month of Muharram and to leave what is forbidden, what is disliked by you and to enter towards your rahmah and mercy all the way till the 12th month of Zulhaj where it's a pilgrimage that that movement was accepted and Allah brought all the souls into that Divinely Presence to be dressed and to be blessed. But these 10 days of Muharram are the gates of forgiveness and light, lights in which Allah want to dress upon the servant, the light in which He dressed upon Sayyidina Adam salam from his fall, his fall from heaven upon the earth. After the years of crying and crying, Sayyidina Adam was reminded of his tour in paradise. And at that time he remembered, Ya Hamid Abu Haq Muhammad Ya Ali Umba Haq Ali, Allah's most highest name, Ya Allahu Ya Khaliq Ba Haq Fatima Tizara Ya Rahman Ba Haq Imam Al Hasan Ya Rahim bi haqqil Imam al Husayn al Salam and Allah Zabajan asked, How you knew those words? And he remembered, I went on a tour with Sayyidina Jibra'il al Salam and I saw that reality of light, I saw this palace and kingdom of light, and the whole story of what Sayyidina Adam al Salam had seen of those realities and the bab and the, the gates, what were written upon them, are recalled. I'm asking by the tawassal of those names, grant me maghfirah. At that time, his dua began to flow, and Allah accepted his repentance. Means for everything, there's a key. Don't think you just make the dua and Allah accepts it. There's a key in which to ask, then the dua is recognized by the Divinely Presence. If that was so, everybody would read Ayatul Kareem and everything would be happening all over the earth according to your will. It's not, so there must be a key. So Adam salam, Sayyidina Adam knew that reality, means teaching from beginning that there's a secret in Sayyidina Muhammad and his Ahlul Bayt. This has nothing to do with the secret of the Holy Companions. Tonight is, is not about that subject, tonight is about the secret of this Ahlul Bayt. One doesn't take from the other, each one has their own magnificent secret. Means that he understood that reality, there is a reality within that, I'm asking the maghfirah from that. And Sayyidina Nu through all his difficulties and tribulation and trials, means our life was about being tested, our soul is the ship. And it's going to traverse all of these testings Allah granted a nijat at that time. That through your trials and tribulations I'll grant you a resting to rest your soul into my heavenly kingdom. So means then Ashura is not something small but it's tremendous and how to reach it and achieve it. And it's a lifelong. If Allah accepts your first ashura, you may enter the qalb, the sir of your qalb, the secret of your qalb. If Allah accepted your first ashura, because you're going through all these latayfs, means He accepted your repentance, He accepted your fall onto earth. And now I'm going to open for you Isma Kullaha. That if Allah forgives you, He dresses you. Allah don't just forgive you with nothing. If you know you've been forgiven, you've been dressed by Allah's Divinely Knowledges. Wa'alama isma kullaha and we taught him everything. 
means that Bab opened of Maqfirah. When Allah accepts the repentance of Sayyidina Nuh means that your struggle was accepted by us, your fight was accepted by us and you've landed on to the shores of safety. Allah took you from the oceans of ignorance and making your soul to land, where your soul can land but in His heavenly kingdom that the struggle of your body was accepted and you'll be landing into your paradise reality. So means that again that ashura that we're, we're waiting Ya Rabbi open, open, open. The second one that opens is the seer and the life of Sayyidina Nu must be dressing the servant. Then Sayyidina Ibrahim that your fight was accepted and that we threw you into every type of difficulty. And Sayyidina Ibrahim was saved from the fire, قُلْ يَا النَّهْرُ كُنِي بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى Ibrahim. That Allah give you a control over your fire. This fire of Nimrod is going to be burning this dunya. I don't know what they're going to release from their technologies and how they're going to activate that <coughs> Nimrod within everyone. But if Allah didn't open that bab and that maqfira means then you become enraged with fire and you're narani and fiery person. But what Allah want for the servant at that maqam, if Sayyidina Ibrahim come to dress the servant that, قُلْ يَا نَهْرُ كُنِي بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا that your fire no longer burns humanity but it only burns the depth of your inner being and you have an inner anguish and inner sorrow that only Allah can relieve that difficulty. Anger of external people burns everyone, as soon as they're angry they're angry at everyone, everyone's in difficulty by their rage. Everything is disrespected and engulfed by that fire. So it means the ashura of that maqam, Allah make the fire of their anger and their qadab to be down. They're angry for Allah's sake, they're happy for Allah's sake. What angers Allah angers their reality and the anger is within and it can only be resolved by prayers. And as a result they have a very tranquil personality and Allah's nazar fires and, and dresses upon their souls. If Allah opened the maqam of Sayyidina Musa's reality on his ashura, Allah saved him and took him and opened for everything into the Promised Land. Means if the servant is… soul is landing his qadab is going, then Allah brings a rihsiba, the angel that carries your soul continuously into your paradise reality and that you walk upon the earth but with your physic, your spiritual reality is walking upon the earth. They walk from their paradise dress upon the earth. They were given their promised land and the covenant that Allah opened for them is not an ark that they carry but the covenant within their heart is the Muhammadan covenant. That they carry the covenant of Allah in the house of Allah the heart was opened by Allah and inside that heart carries my… had my covenant upon that servant. If Allah accept the, the ashura of Sayyidina Isa the Sayyidina Isa was raised into the paradises. That makes that servant to be a servant whom is raised and is continuously on a mirage into the Divinely Presence. That at every moment is in a mirage into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad because he's ascending. Our ascension is in the heart and in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and if Allah grant all of that ascension then the greatest now coming is in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad The one whom annihilates everything to be in perfect submission to Allah 
means you'll be granted the city of lights where the malakut dress upon the servant. The realities of malakut dress upon that reality of that servant. And that reality of Ashanura begin to dress upon them and the family comes from within that reality, not outside but from within that reality that is Sayyidina Muhammad is granting for your Ashura to be granted that you've entered into Medina to Munawwara, that you're in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad their soul and their arwah is floating inside the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad. He is the city of all lights and knowledges and Sayyidina is the Bab. I am the city of knowledge wa Ali Babahu. Means that they entered into that city. So then what Imam Hussain comes and gives us the greatest gift is just remember what I did, remember what I stood for. Shed a tear for the way in which I suffered. Some people will read and say, oh this was like this, this was like this, there's no need to cry. Oh if they take your family and rip your children to pieces, you'll be screaming on the street and you'd expect everybody to be crying with you. So my kid had a little finger shape, we'd pray for him, his finger's hurting. You don't think what Prophet is thinking, my whole family? Oh my grandchildren were slaughtered in a field. You don't want to gather for them for five minutes, drink a water on their behalf and say how difficult they had even a water to drink. Ya Rabbi grant me forgiveness that everything comes so easy for me. That you think and remember what a difficulty they had. They said that one tear to remember the life of Imam Hussain is enough to intercede for all those realities because they're not relying on your ability to lift yourself. They're not relying on your ability to do any actions because if you look into your heart they can negate all the actions that you're doing. You think your salah is important, if they look into your heart they'll see the reality of what your salah is. Don't come to Allah thinking your amal is of any importance. They realize, my amal, God forbid Ya Rabbi you look at any of my actions, you think my actions are going to have any impressive qualities to Allah No, say nothing. I'm coming purely for my intention and the greatest intention is love. The greatest intention is love. There are people, big ulama, they gather together and they read the holy hadith of Prophet and they read one, two, three, four, five hundred, six hundred. Keep reading hadith, keep reading hadith, but you don't do any of them. You read it, you dictate it, but you didn't live by even one of them. So we came to Imam Nawi has 40 great hadith, and they have many classes on the 40 hadith. So, what was the first hadith? Because this is going to be the gate of our life. If you understood that hadith then you understand tariqah. If you didn't, good luck for you on whatever path you choose in your life. So what was the first hadith? It's narrated on the authority of the Amir al-Mu'mineen. Sayyidina Umar Furu. Who said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, actions are according, are according to intentions and everyone will get what was intended. Whoever migrates with an intention for Allah and His Messenger, the migration will be for the sake of Allah and His Messenger. And whoever migrates for worldly gain or to marry a woman, then his migration will be for the sake of whatever he migrated for. My mic is not working. No, but he's finished. Is there sound on mine? Yeah? So the hadith was about intention, that you… action is going to be based on intention. To the point of even your migration in life, it's based on intention. Was it for Allah and His Rasul or was it for business, dunya and personal relations? Then awliyaullah come into our life and say, stop at that hadith, you don't have to read so many. Take one hadith in your life and try to live by it and open its reality. 
When Prophet is saying that Allah is every action based on intention, means then where is the nazar of Allah Where is the vision of Allah What's the hadith telling us? Allah is saying that every action is going to be based on your heart. So Allah is not looking to your body, He's looking at your heart. Do you understand? Allah is saying, my intention, I want to know your intention. So Prophet is giving us a code that Allah is looking at your heart, be careful. He doesn't care for your body. He's going to first find out what's in the heart. If everything checks off, body is secondary. So it means our life is not based on the body actions but based on the heart actions. Our life is based on the heart actions. And the migration because of Muharram, what's your intention for this year? It's a new year, is it for money and women, for relationships? Oh Ya Rabbi, let me be in a year of my faith that your ni'mat to be completed upon me that I draw closer to Sayyidina Muhammad and that my deen, my Islam, my Iman wal maqam al ihsan to be perfected because Allah is not looking to the body but looking to the heart of the believer. So then our life was based and all the tariqahs come to try to teach that reality. Don't build your life on your physical actions if your intentions were no good with Allah Take a life in which you clean your heart, look into your heart, perfect the heart. They want to focus on all of the body issues and have class after class of how to wash your body but they don't have a single scholar teaching us how to wash your heart. Allah says, I didn't look to the body but I'm looking at your heart, your intention. Where does intention come from? Intention doesn't come from your maqs, it comes from your qalb. You merely intend and the, the intention, the desire, the want has to manifest within the heart. Allah provides a physical action to complete what you intended. If you didn't put that intention in the heart, the physical action doesn't appear. So Prophet is teaching. Your life is going to be based on intention. That's why then starting Muharram with intention, Ya Rabbi, that we want to move towards your realities. And that in that year I'm not focusing on my physical. I do all the physical actions because you ordered me to do them. But that reward and the nazar and the gaze of Allah is not coming on that, it's coming to see your heart. So then the greatest intention, the most powerful intention is the intention of muhabbat where Allah will not judge love. Who could judge love? Say, Ya Rabbi I'm, I'm making an intention for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad there's no longer any requirement to judge anything. If your love wasn't as good as the next person's, no problem, there's no judging love. But everything else if you build your life on all the external actions you're, you're building on a cliff because you don't know if Allah comes to judge it, what's going to happen with it. So then our whole life secret became put your action based on your intention. Make the intention the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Make a life in which to reach that reality. How am I going to show that love with my actions, with my hands, with my heart, with everything that you've given to me Ya Rabbi, let it to manifest the action of that love and that muhabbat. And nobody knows what's in the heart of Allah's servant. All those who make comments on the internet they have to be careful not to be burned. When people start making comments based on other people's perceived actions, 
you can be burned in that because God forbid you're wrong in what your comments are and what you're thinking. Between Allah and His servant nobody knows what Allah's intention, what, what Allah's servant's intention is. Allah knows the biggest shirk is to think you know what's in the heart of someone else. So it means our whole life becomes more and more clear that Allah knows what's in the intention of His servant and try to live a life in which all our actions are based on the purified intention of love and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad If you make that intention most definitely Allah will make every action to be beatific because your intention was based on that love. Means that's the teaching of a hadith. You take the one hadith and you live by that reality because the second hadith is the hadith of Sayyidina Jibreel and teaching the holy companions their deen, Islam, Iman, Wal Maqam, Al Ihsan. If you didn't learn the first hadith, the second one definitely will throw you off in different directions. But if you learn the first that everything going to be based on intention, everything going to be based on love, now the hadith of Sayyidina Jibreel will come in and make sense. The why Sayyidina Jibreel appeared to begin to teach that, that your Islam, these are the issues, your Iman is to love. Sayyidina Muhammad more than you love yourself. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding of the ways of haqqaiq and the realities of these haqqaiqs in this holy month of Muharram which is a one and nine, that this is the opening of nineteen between the first month and nine days, between this one and nine is the opening of every reality. By the time it hits ten is the reality of one and ten. For those who understand the numbers then this is a tremendous opening in the Ashura. We pray that Allah give us a life to see tomorrow night and Monday or if they're doing it on Monday and Tuesday whenever you feel necessary. That Allah dress us from those lights, bless us from those lights and to make our hearts and our eyes to cry for their maqam and their stations, their suffering, the difficulties in which they endured and all their loved ones and what they had to witness happening to their loved ones. That Ya Rabbi let us to shed a tear for them and never to see that in our lives and in our family and our community inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.